Uh, so here I'm going to be discussing QGIS enhanced validation of crop maps that are derived from satellite uh, data. So basically, I want to discuss first why I'm a big fan of QGIS and my journey with it, because it started only two years ago during my MSc. Uh, first, I had no any idea that QGIS existed. And then during a one year of MSc, I had to two modules related with only the basic, basics of QGIS. But then when I came to my thesis, my supervisor was like, you have to use QGIS in the analysis. And that's when I really started learning like how to use, because it was only three months period. So I wanted to just use simple and fast tools of QGIS. And uh, I'll be discussing one of these simple ways that I have found a way to analyze my data with QGIS today. So this, uh, presentation will be part of my MSc thesis. So uh, what helped me because I found, of course, a supportive community and the simplicity of the tools in QGIS helped me a lot. So now I will start by uh, like discussing the many uses of QGIS in agricultural in general, and then I'm going to go to the crop map uh, validation. So QGIS uh, helps in spatial data mapping in agricultural uses, like it can uh, manage your spatial data, like crop mapping, uh, also mapping of social moisture, uh, soil moisture content, uh, soil classification, and also it can help in the analysis of the agriculture, like. Uh, to help you monitor the growth of your crop, to be able to predict stresses at early phenological stages. And uh, it also aids in the process of precision agriculture. For instance, you can use uh, the clustering in QGIS to be able to identify the spatial uh, differences of soil and water levels to be able to identify zones for irrigation and then uh, alter your water demand and your other uh, fertilizers input, other soil management practices based on uh, these differences that you get. Uh, it also aids in uh, the process of uh, yield prediction, integrating models with QGIS uh, to analyze uh, trend like historical data and yield production and be able to use it as an input to models. And you can also integrate uh, flood forecasts, drought forecasts and their impact on agricultural uh, performance. So now I'll be talking about uh, my case study area. It's uh, the Jazeera Irrigation Scheme. It's located in Sudan, in Africa. So it's one of the largest irrigation schemes globally with an area of approximately 8,800 kilometers square. So uh, it's uh, gravity irrigation and it has uh, like a coarse crop rotation where four different uh, crops are cultivated in consecutive fields and then one uh, field is left fallow and every season the pattern like changes within the rotation itself. So uh, why do like how do I use uh, remote sensing and crop mapping to get uh, in QGIS to get my maps? Uh, I used uh, Sentinel-2 images and uh, with the help from with of QField to collect the training samples from the field, from the irrigation scheme, like basically inputting the GPS and your observations of what's cultivated there. And because it was a very large irrigation scheme, we have to focus on like four main regions, divide the scheme into four main regions. And then from each region, we get like a very limited amount of training data. 
So uh, then I used a Google Earth Engine and a Smile Forest algorithm to uh, train the machine learning to uh, identify the crop maps based on the training data and the remote sensing images. Uh, and then I used the QGIS for the visualization of the data and for the further analysis and also to validate because I also had another uh, remote sensing derived product from a different source. So I had to compare them because I didn't have actual crop maps from the field. So I had to use different remote sensing and the validation here, it's uncertainties both ways. So I had to come with a, uh, like to figure out a way to do that. So uh, here, this is the crop map. So let's go to why uh, there are difficulties in manual crop mapping, especially in such large areas like my scheme. So uh, here, the farmers, they're given the freedom to cultivate their uh, crop of choice. And before the season, like uh, some farmers even tend to change their mind within the last month, just like try to prepare their land differently for a different crop. So that makes it for the higher authorities really difficult to pre-plan. They know that there are a group of crops that they have to choose from, but then they don't know exactly the combination of the crops in the field. So that makes it really hard to plan for the irrigation scheduling, to plan for the uh, soil management and everything. So also uh, the unlimited time that's required for manual crop mopping for such a scheme, then it would be too late uh, during the season that you can't monitor the early phenological stages of the plant. And uh, also currently there are additional access challenges uh, due to safety reasons. And uh, also for such large schemes, you'll need a large amount of labor, which is very costly and high data collection, transportation to be able to access, like to cover the whole 8,000 kilometers square. So, uh, what I did, as I mentioned, is validated uh, my crop map against another uh, remote sensing map uh, using pixel by pixel comparison. And also I tried to make use of the results of the validation to enhance the accuracy furthermore. So first, because the area was very large and I didn't really have time and uh, resources to like do a Doro analysis for the entire area. I use just the map swipe tool for, I think most of you know it. It's from the QGIS. It helps to uh, swipe two layers that are beneath each other uh, to just visually compare the two maps. And uh, that helped me identify the small little areas within the large scheme that has major discrepancies between the two maps. So uh, then the focused analysis was only on these regions instead of working at the entire scheme as a whole. So this was the first map and this is the second map. We can see more fallow land here. So uh, the detailed analysis of the discrepancies, how I went with it is, um, I first, uh, as mentioned, identified the regions with the discrepancies and then isolated them, just clicked them out and uh, produced like, uh, used the normal raster calculator to just isolate the pixels that are similarly classified in the two maps. And then uh, I used this isolated similar pixels to create a new data for my self-training data, and then iterated the whole process again. And so this, every time I get, I got an increased accuracy because I increased my training samples data set. 
So until uh, the last loop was when there's no change in accuracy anymore, that's when I knew that this was the optimum accuracy that I could get from my uh, like machine learning process. So uh, actually that worked because the first map that I got the confusion matrix accuracy was 70%. And I ended up with the last one was 85%. So why do we need accurate crop mapping? Uh, it's because we want to optimize our yield. So we have to include uh, crop specific parameters uh, to be able to uh, identify the problems like the pests related with each crop independently and know how the disease is associated with, e with each one. We also needed to optimize our uh, water resources management to increase the water productivity for you who are not familiar with water productivity. It's actually, it's basically the concept of creating more crop per drop, which is, yeah, the amount of crop produced per water consumed or uh, supplied. And also we need it for land use planning because uh, like this is not only for crop mapping, we can also use similar approaches for land cover classification in general. So we'd be able to identify where are the built up areas are, where are the cultivated land and where are our wetlands or fallow land. And uh, yeah. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for your presentation, and I will now open the discussion part. So what machine learning model or method did you originally use to classify the, the data? I used a random forest algorithm in the Google Earth platform. Yeah. Um, thanks for your presentation. How um, many crop types did you uh, map? I mapped uh, six crop types. Six crop types. Thank yeah, you. Six. And uh, from using the six crop types, you managed uh, the 85% uh, accuracy in the confusion matrix. Yes. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Very nice. Are there any other questions? Okay, so thank you for your presentation. And uh, the, that's all for today. This is the last presentation. So I hope we'll see you at the Sunday social event, which starts at uh, 7.30 p.m. So let's see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation.